Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our financial wellness webinar, Make Tax Season Work For You, Free Tax Preparation Services. Today's webinar is sponsored by Accorda Therapeutics, and we're very thankful that for their sponsorship of this webinar. Uh, I'm going to go over a few housekeeping tips with you. Uh, the audio for today's webinar is being broadcast through your computer. Please make sure your speakers are turned on or your headphones are plugged in. You can control the audio broadcast via the audio broadcast panel. If you accidentally close the panel, you can reopen by going to the communicate menu, which is located at the top of the screen, and choose audio broadcast. If you do not have sound capabilities on your computer or you prefer to listen by phone, we've provided the number here for you. Let's just hold for one second so folks who need to can grab that number. You do not need an, an, enter an attendee in case anybody does fall off and needs to call in. Real-time captioning is provided during this webinar. The captions can be found in the Media Viewer panel, which appears in the lower right-hand corner of the webinar platform. If you do not see the captions, you may need to open the Media Viewer panel by selecting the Media Viewer button in the upper right-hand corner of the webinar platform. If you want to make the Media Viewer panel larger, you can minimize other panels like chat, Q&A, and or participants. We, we want you to submit questions during today's webinar, so to provide those, please use the chat box or the Q&A box to send the questions that you have to Nakia Matthews. She will direct the questions accordingly during the Q&A portion. If you happen to be listening by phone and you're not logged into the webinar, you may also ask questions by emailing your questions directly to Nakia at nmatthews at ndi-inc.org. If you miss anything today or you're wishing that you had the slides ahead of time, this webinar is being recorded and the materials will be placed on our website at www dot real economic impact dot org forward slash financial wellness. If you experience any technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box to send a message to our host, Nakia Matthews, or you can email Nakia again at nmatthews at ndi hyphen inc dot org. I'm going to be your moderator today. My name is Elizabeth Jennings. I'm the Deputy Director here at National Disability Institute, and I really love doing these Accorda webinars because most of the folks who come on to today's webinar will be individuals who are living with a disability or living with a chronic health condition, and it's really such a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak directly to each of you rather than speaking to um, other folks in the disability services field who are providing services to individuals. So thank you again for joining us today. It's really our pleasure to have you with us. So today we're going to talk a little bit about financial wellness, just to bring us all on the same page about what financial wellness is. Then we're going to hear about favorable tax provisions and free tax services from our partners at the IRS SPEC. Then we're going to talk about My Free Taxes through some of my colleagues here at National Disability Institute. We're going to leave lots of time for questions and answers, so please don't hesitate as things pop up to send them in through the, the chat or the Q&A. And we're going to leave you with some suggested next steps that you can take to put everything you learn together to action in your own life. I again want to say a special thank you to our sponsor, Accorda Therapeutics, who sponsors the Financial Wellness Webinar Series. So for those of you who are new to our webinar series, uh, National Disability Institute is a national research and development organization. Our mission is to promote income preservation and asset development for persons with disabilities and to build a better economic future for all Americans with disabilities. 
We do this because the national poverty estimates for people with disabilities are not looking so good. For individuals without disabilities in 2013, about 12.5% had income below the poverty level over a 12-month period. For folks with disabilities, that amount was more than two times that rate. It was 28.2%. The Americans with Disability Act provides several things to individuals with disabilities, including assurance of equality of opportunity, full participation, independent living, and economic self-sufficiency. And that's where we get our mission here at National Disability Institute. We've made tremendous strides in several other aspects promised under the Americans with Disabilities Act, and we haven't focused as much on economic self-sufficiency. So we hope some of our efforts, like today's financial wellness webinar, will support you in building your own economic self-sufficiency and supporting others in doing so as well. So let's take a moment to talk about financial wellness. We define financial wellness as the state of a person's finances with the intent of working towards financial behaviors that limit stress and the impact of stress on one's daily life. And there's a tremendous amount of research that shows that financial stress can have a huge impact on health, on our ability to function daily, and especially on our ability to be effective at work. Financial wellness can have many components. It's financial literacy, using affordable financial services, and staying away from predatory or alternative financial services. It's utilizing favorable tax provisions, which we're going to talk about today. Budgeting, understanding public benefit rules and the impact of earning and saving money on those benefits, uh, which we talked about in our last webinar, and you can check out in our webinar archives that we'll share the link uh, in, the, in, the, in the chat box in just a few minutes. Financial wellness is also about building and maintaining assets, and if you are on the line and you're not sure how to do that based upon some benefit that may have an asset limit, please do reach out to us. There are several ways that you can do that, and we'd be happy to share that information with you. It's also uh, accessing things that can support you in building your financial wellness, such as accessing available health care subsidies and understanding work and your long-term disability options. We have many webinars in our archive um, on our website through the Financial Wellness Webinar Series. So if any of these topics strike your interest, check out the webinar archives. We did most of these topics. If it's something that we didn't have a chance to share yet, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to share information with you or help you secure resources in your local area. So I touched upon this just a little bit, but financial wellness is important because it impacts both your mental and physical health. And I know many folks on the line who are living with a chronic health condition know how important it can be to reduce stress and to uh, have things as, as organized and as kind of flowing properly as they should, as you can, so that you can meet those different uh, health needs as they come up. Financial wellness positively impacts your self-concept. It feels great when you complete one of your financial goals or when you know that you're moving forward in the best way possible based on um, your, your, financial, your current financial situation and where you're striving to go. It changes your status with other community stakeholders. It's really hard to, to participate if, you're, if you don't have the finances to do so. And it directly impacts your quality life in a whole host of ways, not the least of which is um, having the opportunity to live the life that we each design for ourselves. We did some research on financial wellness and people with disability and chronic health conditions with our partners at MSAA, and here's a little bit of what we found, and my apologies to those of you who have joined us before and, and already know these stats, maybe by heart by now. But for those of you who are new, um, through this research, we found that over 50% of households earn less than $35,000 annually, 16.4% earn less than $50,000, but more than $35,000. So that leaves a, a large portion of people, uh, almost 30%, who are 
uh, living with an annual income below 35000 and those are all households with an individual living with MS. When asked about the ability to pay all of their bills in a typical month, a third said they have a very difficult time, and almost half, 46.9% report a somewhat difficult time. And 43% reported that their financial status has affected their ability to access medical care at some point. And we have some new data that we're developing here at National Disability Institute that looks at um, medical debt and disability, and we're finding very significant differences between people with disabilities and those without, and their level of medical debt um, obviously being much higher. We also, in our survey conducted with MSAA, found that individuals with MS indicated that they do not have enough savings to cover three months' expenses, and that was about 72% of respondents. 67% reported that their finances were worse since their MS diagnosis, and almost 74% reported that they were not aware of or had not used different financial stability programs, such as the Earned Income Tax Credit, which we're going to talk about today, individual development accounts, the Family Self-Sufficiency Program, which is available to folks who are living in uh, public housing, living in programs under public housing authorities, and PASS, that's Social Security's Plan for Achieving Self-Support. Again, we shared information about each of these through the Financial Wellness Webinar Series, and you can check out the archives to access that information, and you are always welcome to reach out to us to learn more. So I wanted to, before we jump into our tax discussion, just give you a very quick visual of the different financial wellness strategies that exist. I'm going to read them very quickly for anybody who um, would benefit from that. So there's financial education, budgeting, credit repair, and getting banked. And we do have research that shows that about, uh, actually, almost half of individuals um, in a household headed by a person with a disability are either unbanked or underbanked, meaning that they do have a bank account, but they're still using alternative financial services. Other financial wellness strategies are the use of work incentives, Social Security work incentive, tax incentives, which we'll discuss today, along with volunteer income tax assistance and the earned income tax credit. State Medicaid buy-in programs, which for those of you who are living with a disability and are working or are thinking about returning to work, these are not quite yet available in every state, but many states have the option where you can buy into the Medicaid program when, you're, when your earnings or your assets push you out of the regular Medicaid eligibility. There are other strategies such as the family self-sufficiency programs, individual development accounts, assistive technology loan funds, student loans, pool trust, and ABLE accounts, all of which are ways that you can either access funds or save money without it negatively impacting a public benefit. Post-secondary education, employment, self-employment, microenterprise, short and long-term savings, and home ownership, we, all, we describe as multiple ways that you can improve your own personal assets. And then in the bottom, we have some strategies that you may need if you fall into trouble along the way. There are protection and advocacy, which is available to people with disabilities in every state. Taxpayer advocates, which are also available in every state. Credit counseling. Uh, which sometimes gets a pretty bad name, but there are really wonderful programs out there provided by nonprofits. And if you need a referral to a, credit, uh, a, a legitimate credit counseling organization, please do let us know. Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, well, which, which we'll discuss today, and work, in, work Incentive Planning and Assistance Programs, which are there to help you better understand your Social Security disability insurance or supplemental security income and the impact of work on those benefits. 
So forgive me if I went a little fast. I'm very excited to hear from our wonderful partner at the IRS Spec, Richard Keeling, who's going to uh, share with you some information about favorable tax provisions and some strategies you can take this tax season to get your uh, taxes done for free. So welcome, Richard. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank, thank you, and hopefully you can hear me okay? We can hear you loud and clear, Richard. Thanks. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, uh, for, for joining us this afternoon. Um, I am a senior tax analyst with the uh, Stakeholder Partnership in Education and Communication. We were given a really long name a few years ago. And I mostly work with uh, national partners in the, that work with people with disabilities, such as NDI, and I also oversee the, the veterans program as well. So with that, I just want to just tell you a little bit about our organization. Um, I've already mentioned we have a real long name, but we serve mostly the low to moderate income taxpayers. That include people such senior citizens, people with disabilities, people with limited English proficiency, and Native Americans, to name a few. And we want to help the underserved populations by informing them of various credits and deductions that they're entitled to and also help them receive free tax preparation assistance. Once the taxpayer receives the refund, our next goal is to help them find ways to help them increase their income and build savings. We also oversee the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program and the tax counseling for the elderly program, along with a $12 million a year grant that we provide to organizations to help provide these services. And um, just, just to let you know, we did receive additional funding uh, this year from, uh, from Congress. It won't go into effect until next year, but uh, they increased it from 12 million to 15 million that we'll have to give out to um, various partners to provide these services. Um, we basically have a, a three-pronged approach business model of, of, as I mentioned, income tax preparation, uh, education outreach, and financial education and asset building information. But we provide leverage benefits to millions of taxpayers through national and local partners who actually are the ones who deliver most of these programs and services. Okay. okay. So we know from research that the market for free tax preparation services is, is very substantial. Uh, it's approximately, as shown on the slide, about 16 to 19 million people that would meet the free tax preparation criteria. And based on research and everything else, we, we feel that the 16 million that's, that are, are available for free tax preparation, we actually feel that number's probably a little bit lower than it is. It was conducted a few years ago by some different think tank organizations and studies. But what we do know, last year, over 90,000 volunteers prepared more than 3.7 million returns and provided over $4 billion in refunds at over 12,000 of our free tax preparation sites nationwide. And probably just as importantly, it saved more than $2.9 million in tax preparation fees uh, by people who normally would go to a, a preparer site. And we feel that the, the amount of preparers, I'm sorry, the amount of pre-tax preparation programs that we have that people who qualify for our services shouldn't have to pay. Um, now, there's always going to be exceptions to the rule if you have a little bit more complex return. But for the most part, if you have a, a, a basic return, um, we, we will we'll take our volunteers that are all IRS certified. In other words, they have to take a test in order to become volunteer preparers. And we looked at the quality rate amongst them, which was 98% last year, 98% accurate, versus people in, in some of the 
other organizations, it was it was much lower uh, percentage wise. Mostly because uh, we provide much more training than than some of the uh, other preparers do. Uh, especially people that are that just do this during the filing season and and then they're off to maybe another job or or whatever. You know, this, and it was interesting this morning I did go online just to look up and see how many people have filed to date and as of midnight last night there was about 23 million people that have filed and uh you know, the majority of those of people have gone to prepare H and R Block. I think had the lead in with like over a million people. Uh, Tax Act was second with about 950 thousand people and such. And you know, I look at the numbers and you know, I see the commercials. I'm sure you do as well. And and yeah, they look nice saying that they're going to get you a maximum refund. But um, I assure you that going to a, a free tax preparation service can not only provide you with free tax preparation services, but many of the coalitions and partners that we have out there also have all types of other plans that can be set up, uh, financial services, start helping starting a checking account for free or savings account, along with other asset building programs. And I think uh, later on in the presentation, you'll hear from other people at NDI, uh, Talking about some of those services, but our main our main service, our signature program, is the volunteer and in, in tax assist. I'm sorry, the volunteer income tax assistance program. This started over 40 years ago, um, and at the time we just did a small amount of returns each year because uh, it was something that it was mostly IRS people were doing and and volunteering on their on their own time. And it, it has expanded over the years uh, from doing a few hundred returns to, as I showed you before, uh, almost you know, 3.8 million returns a year. So it is a, uh, this is where you sit face to face across from someone. They're usually located at community based types of centers, United Way, Goodwill, uh, as, as some sorts of example. And services are available, generally available to people whose income is $54,000 and below. And I don't want to get into this too much because it can cause some some issues. But basically, that's just a guideline at 54000 that it kind of goes in line in what the threshold for the earned income tax credit is, which I'll get into later. Um, so it doesn't mean if you go to a, a, a site that they're going to turn you away if, if your income is 60000 or 65000 as long as everything else is in scope. So, And that's up to the discretion of every every site that's out there. I mean, this is just a general guideline. As I mentioned, all our volunteers are certified, and we especially want people to claim the earned income tax credit and other credits, and that's why we – we have this program because we know so many people are not, and I will talk about that later as well. And of course, all these services are free, and partners are not our partners are not allowed to charge anyone for any of any of these services. The other program that's that's going going on for many years, um, almost as many. This actually started prior to uh, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program by ARP volunteers, but the Tax Counseling for the Elderly Program. And again, it's it's very similar to the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, except the majority of these sites are operated by ARP Foundation's Tax Aid Program. And they do prefer, or, or they do cater to people 60 years of age or older, and they also have special knowledge about pensions and retirement issues uh, unique to, to seniors. Again, these are IRS certified volunteers and ARP volunteers generally receive a little bit of stipend for travel, uh, but that's, that's all they really get as volunteers. They really can't accept anything else um, in addition to that. 
One thing I did want to say, if, if you're not 60 years of age and you go to a ARP site or text something for the elderly site, um, you, if, even if you got there first, if someone comes up while you're waiting, they would get to go in front of you. So this is a good incentive if you are over the age of 60 to go to one of the tax counseling for the elderly sites uh, throughout, throughout the country. So I've put down some information for you where you can find your nearest voluntary income tax assistance site or your tax counseling for the elderly site. And um, these are locators that we have. Our site locator uh, up at the top, it's, uh, it's a very simple tool that is located on our website that, that I've given you here. And um, all you do is put in a zip code and it'll show you the approximate miles from the center of where that zip code is located. If you don't have a computer, you can, you can call this toll-free number and get the information as well. Uh, it, uses, it uses Google Maps to help you navigate to the site if you need that. So there are these locator guides that are located. Uh, ours is, as I mentioned, on our site. The other one is on the ARP site. Now, another program that we have is the IRS Free File. And I, I mentioned how I, I went last night and looked or, or I'm sorry, you know, to see what the drain was as of midnight last night. And about 400,000 people have already used IRS Free File. Basically, the, the, the service consists of it's a do-it-your-own type of service where you can pick from there's 13 different types of software providers out there, and each of the 13 companies, they have their own special rules, uh, as far as their own special offers, generally based on age, income, or state residency. And the best thing to do is just review each of the companies. There's a little little snippet for each company that's out there um, where it tells you what they do or who, who they service. Or there's also, if you go to our uh, the irs.gov backslash free file, there is a, a help me tool that will help you find the software for which you're eligible, including which companies offer a free state tax return. In addition, um, there's free file fillable forms, um, and uh, there was about 50,000 people that have used this so far to date, and uh, this, this is for people that want to just go on and complete their own taxes. They probably don't have anything more than a W-2 and maybe uh, a few exemptions or something very simple that they can do. This, again, is available at no cost. Um, the, the, the software actually does simple calculations, so you don't have to worry about making any math errors. And then once you complete the return, you can automatically, electronically file it for free as well. And I'm, I'm sorry, this slide actually should be called a alternative models instead of self-help text preparation um, because uh, we, we have one model that, that's known as virtual VITA. And what this does, it's basically the same as doing voluntary income tax assistance, except it's not it's not face-to-face. -face. It's using some sort of technology uh, such as Skype or uh, something through the internet, fax, fax or video, but it, but it is basically you contacting someone at a voluntary income tax assistance site, and it's meant for people that cannot have a, uh, it's not possible to do safe or face to face. So, such as if you're living in a rural area, or if you have a disability, or if you're elderly and you are shut in, um, you know, this is, this is a way that you can use the Voluntary Income Tax Assistance model.
Um, now, the, the next one facilitates self-assistance. This is one where taxpayers actually do their own returns with the assistance of a certified volunteer, either face-to-face -face or uh, over, over the phone calling, um, calling a, a, a certified volunteer. This is quite prevalent at high volume sites where uh, places that do thousands of returns a year. Um, and the reason that we, we put it at these sites is because uh, we, we can notice, or I should say our partners can notice, they'll have screeners sitting in the waiting area going through and talking to people. Um, there is a select audience for this, and, and I'm sure Jamie or Katie will talk more about this, but they do generally look for people that are younger, um, ask them questions about how computer savvy they are. So this is something that's very useful for people that are in college uh, that use computers or their, their smartphones to, to basically do a, a lot of different things. And I'm going to not talk any more about that only because, I, like I said, I know that some of our, our partners are, are going to talk about some of the things on that. But I did want to talk about what we call um, tax time saving. It's also been branded by some other organizations out there. And, you know, we know that about 8 out of 10 taxpayers get their refunds by using direct deposit. Uh, it is the safest and most securest way to, to get your refund. Uh, approximately 98% of, of all filers will use this method, but in addition, um, people that are receiving VA benefits and Social Security, almost all of them receive receive their their funds via direct deposit. Um, the, we also, in addition to that, we have the uh, split refunds, um, which basically is a convenient option for managing your money, sending some of your refund to an account for immediate use, and maybe some for future savings, so uh, that along with the safety of direct deposit, uh, we think is, is a is a win situation. Um, whether you file electronically or on paper, uh, direct deposit does give you access to your refund faster than a paper check. And also, we've heard a lot about identity theft, I'm sure all of us, and uh, this is direct deposit also avoids that your check could be lost or stolen or return to IRS as undeliverable. Um, we have savings bonds available on, on your tax returns now. You can purchase up to $5,000 worth of what, what's known as Series I bonds under this program. And if you purchase bonds with your tax refund, um, the amount you requested does go in increments of $50. Um, if you don't buy I bonds, with 100% of your refund, you can elect to have the remaining amount not used to purchase savings bond. That amount can be deposited into your bank uh, or your treasury direct account or mailed to you as a check. And a new program that we've been working very closely with um, Department of Treasury is known as MyRA, which stands for My Retirement Account. This is something that President Obama um, he, he, this was in his State of the Union address about a year ago, um, asking Treasury to, to get this started, where it's available for pretty much anyone in the United States. Um, it's basically designed for people who don't have access to a retirement savings plan at work or who lack other options to save. Um, the My IRA accounts, they don't cost anything to open. There's no required fees and there's no minimum, minimum balance or contributions requirements. Uh, the, the nice thing about my RA is it's simple, safe, and affordable. Um, again, this is, this is a new program. I, I did put a link there if you want to find out more about my RA. I'm not an expert on it. Um, I've, I've sat in on some presentations. I know quite a bit about it. And um, I mean, I think it's personally a good way for, for new savers to start. Uh, it follows, if you're familiar with any IRA program at all, it kind of follows the Roth IRA, 
but for the most part, uh, you know, some of these plans that are out there are are there's fees attached to them, and you know, with the amount of interest you're earning, it might not even be worth having an account. But with the my RA, uh, it is a new type of savings account, and I think that uh, this is going to help a lot of people down the road that um, cannot save in using traditional methods. I also want to mention um, once you've once you've filed your your tax return, you you can now um, we have what's known as modernized e-file, and basically all that means is that. It, it, once you file, as soon as you file your tax return electronically, you'll get a message, whether via email or text, with within an hour or so, letting you know that your return's been accepted. Um, it used to take a day, at least a day, before it could do that. Um, and and the beauty of this is now, you know, once you get that, you can start checking on the status of your refund using this Where's My Refund tool on rs.gov within the next day. So once you've received that message that your return is accepted, all you have to do is simply go to our website, rs.gov backslash refunds, and you only need to put in three things, your Social Security number, your filing status, and you have to have the exact amount of your, your refund, and that's it. It'll tell you what your status is and uh, – when you're going to get your refund, basically. Now, if you don't have a computer, um, we do have an official app here it's called irs to go mobile app, and there's a lot of things that it can do. It can check, again, check the status of your refund. Um, you can make a payment on this. You can get access to mobile-friendly payment options such as IRS Direct Pay, which offers you a free, secure way to pay from directly from your bank, bank account. You can also make a credit or debit card payment through an approved payment processor. It also provides you free tax preparation locations. So before, when I was talking about the Vital Locator, um, on this app, it, it basically does the same thing. It's pulling the same information from our website. So you can find out, you know, the closest voluntary income tax assistance or, uh, in some cases, some of the tax counseling for the elderly sites near you. And, of course, you know, we ask there's, – there's a lot of things that you can do. If you're, if you're using social media, you can follow IRS on, on Twitter and Tumblr. Um, there's, there's, we have all types of helpful videos that are out there, including American Sign Language YouTube. Um, you can also subscribe to – to receive IRS tax tips and more. So now I just want to talk to you about some of the credits and deductions, especially the earned income tax credit, because this is this is huge in our organization. Um, this is something. I mean, I've been with uh, our organization since 2001, a year after it became uh, stood up, and we have 450 people throughout the country that. Uh, work and spec, and we're always – this is one of our top outreach programs, and there's a lot of reasons for it. You know, we, we know the earned income tax credit, um, it's, it's a huge credit uh, and very underutilized. Although a lot of people do claim it, it's, it's, there's still people who are not. So this was – just to give you a little background, it was, it was signed into law in 19. 75, and it was designed to offset uh, regressive payroll taxes and also reward hard work and supplement low wages. Now, since the credit's inception in 1975, presidents from both parties have strengthened it several times and increased it. It's now the, the federal government's largest and most, most effective anti-poverty program. Uh, as you can see, Approximately 28,000 or 28 million people received over $66 billion last year. And in addition, 6.6 .6 million people uh, were lifted above the poverty line, with half of them being children. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons that we promote this so much is because 
we know if someone receives this credit, it, it, it can be a life-changing thing. Um, but also we know that approximately one-third of the population eligible for the earned income tax credit each year changes as their personal exemptions change, such as having a child or getting married or divorced, losing a job or, or starting your, your career, kids graduating from college and, and in workforce. There's a lot of different reasons why uh, people are eligible for the credit or they fall in and out of eligibility from, from year to year. And that's why we need trusted partners and organizations to help us get the word out about this credit. So this little chart I put up shows the um, earned income tax credit and the thresholds for this, this tax year that you're going to be filing for, 2015. And again, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the maximum amount, um, you, you'll notice that 53267 is the maximum amount that you can make if you have three or more children. And if you recall, going back to the one slide I mentioned about the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, that's how we get that $54,000 amount. We just take whatever the earned income tax credit maximum amount is, and we just round it up to the next thousand. So that's where that 54000 is as far as the, uh, the, the general guideline that we have for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. So as I mentioned, um, we, we – uh, that 20% of the people do – I'm sorry, 80% of the people claim the credit properly, which means there's about 20% of people eligible for the credit that do not receive it. And that equates to approximately $12 billion a year. So that's money that's left on the table. And we know our outreach efforts have, have been ineffective over the years. We send out a letter to anyone that appears to qualify based on, on the tax return, and we have a very low response rate of less than 20% of people who respond to the letters. Um, all they simply have to do is just sign it, send it back, and they would get the earned income tax credit, but many don't. They don't trust the IRS. Uh, that's why we, we use trusted partners like National Disability Institute and Accordia and many others. Um, the good news is, if you didn't claim the credit in, in a year, you can go back three years from the due date of the return. So as of right now, um, your 2015 taxes will be due on April 15th. Actually, you have a couple more days this year because of, um, because of some holidays and such. Uh, but, but anyway, that means that your 2014 taxes, 2013 taxes, and 2000 12 taxes, uh, you could also go back and claim the credit. So all in all, if you did receive, um, I, I mentioned the average credit was around 2400 so let's just round up 2500 a year um, for four years if it was never claimed, and that's $10,000, not counting any other credits that, that you may be entitled to, such as the child tax credit. Uh, to receive the child tax credit, uh, you just have to have a child living with you that's under 17 years of age. And both these credits, the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit, are refundable credits. What that means is if you don't owe any tax, uh, you still get a refund. So if you get the $2,500 uh, plus the $1,000 for the child tax credit, if you have one child, uh, that's $3,500 even if you're not paying any taxes. Uh, so it is, again, uh, not to overuse the term, but a win-win situation for taxpayers that, that qualify for these credits and people that have not claimed them. So I wanted to, to show you just some of the information that we have of a, of a poster that you can download for free. We hope that um, not just the people on the call, but all our partners will help us reach out to uh, potentially qualifying workers who miss out on thousands of dollars each year with this credit. We just recently had the earned, earned income tax credit, 10th anniversary of the earned income tax credit awareness day, 
where all our partners uh, did some sort of outreach event, either locally. We had there were some events that went on nationally uh, throughout the country, letting people know. And as I mentioned, uh, th we this is a concerted effort to to help people learn about the credit and motivate people to join the four out of five people who file and claim the credit. Uh, I, I mentioned some, some of the reasons why people didn't get the credit, but there's other reasons too, people that live in rural areas that may not know, or people that are self-employed, uh, people with certain disability pensions or have children with disabilities. Uh, one important thing to note about the earned income tax credit is um, normally you cannot receive the credit if you have a child under the age of 17, I'm sorry, under the age of 24 and full-time student. Age 17 is for the child tax credit. I don't mean to confuse anyone. So anyway, if you, if you have a child under the age of 24 and they are a full-time student, you're eligible. So, but there is um, a rule where if the child has a disability, there is no age limitation. So if you have a child living with you that is 30 years old or 40 years old and you are you take care of them as your dependent, you can claim that person on your tax return um, not only as a dependent but for the earned income tax credit, uh, which I've already shown you the, the amounts I'll just go back one slide here. If you have one child where the credit can be worth anywhere from $9 to $3,359 based on your, your income. So I think that's important to note. And finally, I, I did want to talk to you about some of our, our outreach resources that we have. We've created a special website. It's called Ernicum Tax Credit Central or EIT Central, and this site is for all our partners and um, employers and government agencies and, and preparers out there that that may not have some of the resources. Uh, we can provide information such as uh, uh, if you can if you can see the little tiny poster there where it says work some of the year with an umbrella. Um, you know that's that poster is a, I believe it's a, a 17 by 10 poster. But anyway, uh, these types of things can be hung up in workplaces where you work or uh, socialize community events at church, churches, and, and other places. Um, we also have press section, which offers up-to-date information about the earned income tax credit. I mean, there's there's an overview of the earned income tax credit, all, all types of statistics, hot topics, um, information out there about, as I mentioned, the EIT awareness data we just had last Friday. There's also IRS media relations contact information. There's many articles on the website that you can use to replicate. Again, this is all free. You could put, put on your uh, blog, Facebook, there's on hold telephone messages. Uh, there's there's PSAs that can be used for TV or radio or YouTube videos. Um, and it's not just you. You don't have to be a, a working professional for this. They're available for anyone. Um, we ask people uh, during EITC Awareness Day to add or to send newspaper articles or write a letter to the local editor. Uh, uh, where you you can basically go on and use the templates that we have the templates are the templates that we have in there for your own news release, and we have tips for writing EITC feature stories and fast facts. So again, uh, I just want to let you people know and anyone know about the EIT Central for you, and it's all free. And with that, I have my contact information here. Uh, I'm, I am located in Melbourne, Florida. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it's a, I'm basically in central Florida on the Atlantic coast. But um, I'm available 
every day if you have any questions. You can email me or call me. One of the numbers up there, the first number, the 304 number, is a, a, a number that goes to my computer. The other one is my personal cell. So any questions, comments, or if you need any information, or if you, have, if you work with an organization that wants to partner, I can put you in touch with the local spec relationship manager. I mentioned we have many of them around the country, and um, right now they're pretty busy, but uh, you know, working at, at sites and overseeing sites, but they, they have time to, to work with you if you want to have an event uh, such, such as a free tax preparation event where you work or, at, again, at a community center. You know, of course, we don't, we don't want to duplicate methods if there is something going on a mile away from you, um, you know, then we may just refer people to that. But if you would like to have something uh, or, or do something, please contact me and let me know. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Richard. I mean, really don't know w under what other circumstances anybody from the IRS would make themselves so available to folks. So we really appreciate that. Um, we're going to provide you with a little bit more information about free online self-tax preparation. And to do that, we have um, my colleague, Jamie Robinson. And I also want to say thank you to Jamie and thank you to Katie Metz, who's also with us today. Great. Thanks, Elizabeth. And I just will second that. Um, we work pretty closely uh, with Richard, although he said he's in Florida. I'm in Boston. Elizabeth's in Washington. We all still work closely together through email and, and calls. Um, but Richard and his uh, spec team there are, um, have been incredible over the years, and, and we work very closely together to expand expand the reach, right? And he talked about many of uh, the statistics around how many people are not even aware um, of these resources. And so that's a huge part of our effort um, nationally and with you here today. So I just wanted to kind of touch on uh, a few things again um, because it is so important of why free tax prep is so critical to working families. Um, about 100 million Americans, 70 percent of taxpayers are eligible for free tax prep, yet again, Richard mentioned, only 3.7 million returns were prepared um, by very dedicated, volunteer-based, um, certified uh, folks that in their own right are a pretty amazing group of people and community. Um, so I think that I, I talk about that first bullet there a lot um, to different organizations and different people um, across the country because it's just incredible, again, how many people are just not aware of this or maybe are unsure of, of how to go about finding a VITA site or preparing their own taxes. Um, and there are uh, a lot of resources, as you can see from what Richard um, talked about. And then EITC, such a significant uh, refund where an individual can receive um, uh, up to 6000 over $6,000. And he mentioned how folks could back, go back years if they hadn't applied, and I watched somebody do that um, three times over, the three years back, and walked out with over $10,000 of a refund. Pretty uh, incredible, and first time using um, free tax prep. Um, the average amount of EITC received nationwide is more than 2400 um, Also, more than $10 billion have been refunded to my free taxes, which we're going to talk a little bit more about. That is the self-filing uh, preparation. Um, and then taxpayers use, utilizing free tax prep are saving on average $250 by not using um, a paid preparer. So really important, as Richard mentioned, this money can be really life-changing for people, um, may, may mean a car, may mean first-time savings, uh, paid towards uh, debt. So um, we really want you to hear this message today, but also spread the word um, about these resources. 
And again, a bit of a review here. So here are the different options that you have available to you. Um, volunteer income tax assistance, uh, Richard gave that locator um, tool that you could find out if you had a site near you to go. Um, also TCE sites, uh, virtual VITA, which is pretty much um, having your taxes done for free by someone else uh, virtually online. Um, IRS Free File Alliance, which a few of them down here below, the TurboTax, H&R Block, online taxes. Um, and then he mentioned FSA, Facilitated Self-Assistance, which isn't so much important for you to remember that term, but what that means is you're online um, preparing your own taxes yourself, um, but there is a coach. Um, somebody who is certified, who does know about taxes, um, there to answer questions, um, assist you. Um, so a lot of people like that model. It's not uh, available everywhere, but it's it's worth looking into if you're interested in, you know, taking kind of over being able to do your own taxes and have some independence. Um, it certainly is appealing for people to do that. They don't want to share. Um, all of their information with somebody else and they don't want to go to a VITA site. Um, here you have My Free Taxes that we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Um, over 202,000 returns uh, in 2015, so that shows how much that's uh, spreading these past couple of years. And then you have the, the other uh, FSA um, uh, yielding about 8,000 returns. So let's just focus on the free online self-filing. Um, My Free Taxes um, provides free federal and state tax prep to um, basically individuals and families in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. Uh, and we're going to talk about what that eligibility looks like in a minute. It's a little higher than uh, VITA, so um, that will include um, a broader scope of people. Um, since 2009, My Free Taxes has helped millions of filers to claim more than $10 billion in refunds. And effective October 16th in 2015, United Way Worldwide um, has been operating uh, MyFreeTaxes.com as well as National Helpline. And so since 2009, NDI has been involved in supporting and outreaching, um, spreading awareness, raising awareness around free tax prep um, with a focus on um, self-filing through My Free Taxes. And this year, as United Way kind of took over the operations of that, um, we are supporting and promoting as a kind of a legacy partner is, is kind of what we um, give ourselves the term. And we also have a focus on veterans and workforce. Um, my colleague is on the line, Katie Metz. She kind of leads the veterans' work around this. Um, they really have not been utilizing or embedding uh, free tax preparation um, kind of regularly or historically into the services. So we're working with uh, the VA and the veteran serving organizations nationally to, to do that. Um, and then we also work with the National Workforce System, which called different things uh, everywhere, but uh, most people know it as their unemployment office, <laughs> but they do a lot of other things. And so we have been working with uh, workforce centers across the country to offer My Free Taxes and uh, to market uh, free tax prep to their uh, customers. And so if you're thinking if My Free Taxes, you know, would this be something that I would be interested in or eligible for, here is kind of the outline for folks that, that would be a good match. Um, your income would be less than 62000 a year, adjusted gross income for 2015. You do need a functional email address. Um, you need a valid Social Security number or ITIN. No foreign income, which I really, in the years I've done this, I haven't seen that happen, but it could, and you, you wouldn't be able to do my free taxes with foreign income. And then the last one is you need some computer awareness. And I've heard kind of different definitions for that. Um, some people tend to think, you know, you really have to be comfortable with the computer, but I think the there have been a lot of tax coaches over the years that we've worked with, as well as the um, helpline 
uh, coordinator, um, we'll talk about the helpline in a minute, uh, who said, really, if you can punch in, you know, use the keyboard, and, and even if you're one finger there punching things in, or if you're, um, really, if you're able to text pretty fluently on your phone, that you could also use my free taxes fairly easily. And so this is another big piece of, of this. You know, if you're saying, hmm, I don't know if I want to try to do my own taxes, I'm not sure I could do that, um, there is a helpline. And it's, it's not only a helpline, it's basically those tax coaches that I was referring to, the folks that are certified at VITA to prepare um, taxes, um, all of the, the folks that you would um, get in the helpline are certified and do have experience and they kind of have a tier level. So if you have more complex issues, you kind of go up that tier. And so you have hours of operation here from 10 to 10 and then also on Saturday. Um, and they're staffed by select 211 centers um, across the country. Um, they have also have email support available 24-7 with a 24-hour response and you can also do some chatting um, while you're doing your taxes online. People have, uh, over the years, people have uh, provided really high positive responses to the helpline. Um, it's, it's definitely um, what has helped people get over that hump of, I don't know if I can do this, uh, what if I get stuck, and they've had a really positive uh, experience calling. <clears throat> and so here are just some ways to think about uh, what would you need in order to um, either do your own taxes or go to VITA. And so you can kind of look through this. You know, you need your W-2, your 1099 forms, proof of income, um, your information for deductions, credits, donations. You need a copy of last year's tax return. Um, proof of account for direct deposit of refund, of course, um, Social Security, or there's your ITIN individual taxpayer identification number for each and working adult. And these are kind of the main bullet points here, but there are some great um, uh, publications on my free taxes about what do you need uh, to, to, you know, sit there and be able to file yourself and it gives you the whole low uh, down there. Um, here's a, a few more, 1095A, if you've received the tax credit from the healthcare.gov marketplace, childhood provider name, address, and tax ID, uh, bank routing and account numbers for checking your savings account. Um, and then, a, again, you need a valid uh, email address. And I've actually found a few people who have um, got around that last one where they didn't have one, but they were doing their taxes at a workforce site, at a veteran site, where they could be given help to set up an email um, account, and that worked. But it, it, you really need to be checking it and be able to have that communication that's going to come through the email. Um, so tax refunds and, and benefits. Um, this is very important. So refunds that are received from EITC, the child tax income or child tax credit um, or other tax credits are not considered income for any federally funded public benefit program. So Medicaid, SSI, food stamps, low-income housing, or TANF. And that is because we have the Tax Relief Unemployment Insurance Reauthorization and Job Creation Act. Um, it is not any money that you're getting is not going to be counted as a resource for at least 12 months. So that individual that I, I just told you about that did get EITC back from, from three years and walked out with $10,000, was on SSI and was, you know, this was a discussion that we had around you have 12 months until this will be counted um, as a resource. And I put this slide in because, um, it, you know, I am amazed that at the, tax, the volunteers that um, VITA 
uh, draws in. Um, every year I'm involved here in Boston and I get to meet a lot of different coalitions across the country and um, they're a really um, diverse and dedicated group of people, many of who have jobs but volunteer and, and, and go through all of the training and the testing um, by the IRS to become volunteers in taxes and it is safe to say that they really have a passion in taxes. Um, and so I put this here because you know what, there might be somebody out there that also has a passion for taxes. Um, and so here is the um, link to the online certification. Um, process and there's also in many communities you'll find if you look up your VITA locator and you kind of reach out and connect a lot of those VITA sites will be able to tell you you know that they'll be um, local training um, in the area uh, we have it here in Boston um, and there was about 58 people there I was shocked <laughs> to become certified um, and to do taxes for free um, and to volunteer. So there's the link if you're interested in learning more. And also my contact information um, as well as um, Katie's uh, uh, contact information. I would urge you to, if you have any questions about that are very specific to taxes um, or maybe you want to connect in your, in your community, Richard is um, incredible and he will be very responsive and help you out and anything that uh, you know anything to do with my free taxes please uh, feel free to reach out to myself or Katie um, and then certainly anything around the workforce system uh, I can connect I would be the um, contact for that and Katie would be a great contact if you have any questions around veterans so with that I think I'll turn it back to Rosa Great. Thank you so much, Jamie. Really appreciate your time and your input today. So before we go to questions, I wanted to provide you with some suggested next steps. You got a lot of really great information today. It's tax time, something all of us have to take into consideration. So here are some suggested next steps. One is to choose a free tax prep option. You heard about a few. Um, you may be a little bit not sure how to decide one. I would say just take a look and the one that pops out to you, give it a try and see what you think. If you need a little bit more guidance, please do email in to us. Um, we do have an option on our website where you can send a question in to us at any point in time or reach out to one of us. Um, we'll give you some more content contact information before we leave. I would encourage you to set a date to have your taxes done. So this is your date that you're setting for yourself so that you're not uh, participating in the mad rush uh, in April or that you're going to uh, request an extension so you can put together more of the things you may need so you can claim some different things around um, medical, your medical expenses or things like that. Gather all of the materials that you need and Jamie and Katie did a great job of giving you those on slides 44 to 45 and as we've mentioned earlier, the, this will be posted, an archive of this webinar, including all of the slides for you to download and the key, if you don't mind, maybe you can post that for folks in the chat box so they can document where that will be now. I also want to encourage you because you may get a tax refund or you may be eligible for the earned income tax credit um, and, and not have claimed that before, take some time to look at some of the uh, financial wellness webinar archives that we've done. We have some really great ones on there around setting financial goals for yourself, thinking about where you are now and where you'd like to be, organizing your finances. Uh, and so it might be a good moment in time to think about if you do get that refund, what do you want to use that for? Uh, some people may think of it as sound money, um, but it may just be money that you're going to use to pay down debt or to meet a, another goal that you have for yourself. And I want to reiterate what Jamie mentioned. Feel confident that this refund any tax refund, including the earned income tax credit and the child care tax credit, if you happen to be eligible for that, will not count as income for any federally funded benefit. Uh, 
and will not count as an asset for any federally funded benefit for 12 months. So don't feel that you can't file for fear that you are going to lose an, a, a, a benefit. Um, don't feel that you have to make a, a rash decision about what you'll do with that refund. You have a little bit of time and you can uh, make a solid choice, an informed choice for yourself about what you're going to do with that money. I want to say a special thank you again to our sponsor, Accorda Therapeutics, and open up our line for questions. So we have a few questions. So far, they're mostly for you, Richard. So we'll um, we'll take a look at um, if we can take you off mute. Great. So, um, Richard, we have someone on the line who's joining us from Germany. I think that's pretty cool. Welcome from Germany. And they have some questions about um, filing when they're overseas. And um, they also have questions about um, how they can get a, um, medical credit for things that they have to do on their own, like therapies that they're providing for themselves. Are there some good resources for this person that they can access while they're trying to navigate doing their, their taxes overseas? Yes, we actually have a publication for people that are overseas. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I can get it for you. Um, and the second part of the question, there are publication 907 is a very good publication for looking at some of the benefits and deductions uh, related to people with disabilities. And uh, another publication that is beneficial is the medical publication which I believe it's 502. But it, it, the best place to go is irs.gov, and right on the front page, we have a, a, a little search engine for our publications. And if you don't know the name of the publication, if you're looking, for example, if you're looking for disability-related prod, or, or products, um, you could just put in disability and all the different types of, of publications and forms that we have. I just received, I was looking at an email from uh, some of our communications people, and there, there's going to be a, a nationwide tax tip going out uh, next week around different resources that are available for people with disabilities. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. And I always tell people, if you're not sure where to go, go to, go to irs.gov. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, get, give me a call or contact me, and I'll set you in the right direction. Thanks so much, Richard. And I want to reiterate that to our friend in Germany. A couple of the other questions you sent in are, are really pretty personally detailed. So if you can uh, send one of us an email, we'll connect you with Richard and we'll connect you with the right resources so we can set you off in the right direction without going too deep into your personal situation on this public webinar. Um, we have another question that's pretty detailed. These are these are really good questions. Um, so this person owns um, shares um, that have a, a meager dividend. The shares are for a TV provider in China, and they want to know if that meager dividend might count as a foreign income, excluding them from fee free filing. And I do want to preface that this may be more detailed than we can answer on this webinar. Yeah. It it is, uh, you know, it's something that would not qualify for any of our free tax preparation programs as well. They don't do, well, they do simple transactions, but any foreign tra transactions, they they won't do. For the simple fact that you mentioned that it may fall under uh, foreign tax credit or foreign income and exclusion. So it's it's not something that, I could just answer off the top of my head anyway. Okay, thanks Richard. Uh, we have another question that came in and this person wants to know, to participate in my RA, do I have to have earned income? You know, uh, it's a good question. Um, so if you don't mind Richard, I'd love to take this one. I've been looking at my RA quite a bit. 
Um, so you do actually have to have earned income. It's a requirement of the program. I know that over the years, the couple of years we've been doing the financial wellness webinar series, folks with MS have asked several times, how do I continue to save for retirement when I don't have earned income? Um, so while my RA is a, is a great product for folks who um, would like to save for retirement, but they're employer doesn't offer a retirement savings option, it does still require that you have earned income. Um, if you have questions about what kind of earned income might count, like say you provide um, some babysitting for a neighbor or you help a senior in your area run errands and they pay you for that or you do something else that may not feel like it's it's a, a, a even a, a kind of significant part-time job, um, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to take those questions to my RA and get back to you. Okay, another question we have is, um, Jamie, can you provide again the resource we connect with if we have problems with my free taxes? Sure, so on, let's see, which can I, Go back on the slide here to the helpline. So if, if you had problems, I would encourage you to call the hotline. And um, you should be connected, um, you know, within that time frame there. You have Monday to Friday, Eastern Standard Time, 10 to 10. And then on Saturday, um, noon to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, and that's that's where you would go if you had any issues. You'll see that it's an H and R Block platform, and that is another partner within My Free Taxes. There's been many over the years. It's it's using their platform, and so it's kind of an inter interview based platform, and that's how you're answering the questions. Um, but the helpline is is your first course of action there. Great. Thank you so much, Jamie. Mm -hmm. So another question we had is, can we have a little bit more information about past plans? So I don't know if, um, if, if any of our speakers want to take that or I'm happy to take it. You're probably the expert mostly in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably going too far. But uh, So uh, a PASS plan is a plan for achieving self-support. It's available as a work incentive from the Social Security Administration. It's targeted to people who receive supplemental security income, and it allows you to set aside um, any money other than your SSI cash benefit to save towards anything that you need for employment. So it does require that you complete an application and that you work with the Social Security Administration's past cadres um, to determine that it is a, a, a feasible goal that you have. But it can be a, a wonderful opportunity to set aside as I said, any money other than your SSI cash benefit um, to build that part of your life. So you may be somebody who um, wants to start a small business. You may want to go back to school. Um, if you have interest in doing either of those things, please reach out to us and we'll help you get connected with your um, with your local vocational rehabilitation office who can provide some of those supports. But if you need to save money on your own, SSI, uh, a past plan is a great way to do it. And the money in the past plan will not count against any federally funded public benefit asset limit. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. Um, we have another kind of Social Security question, but it goes into taxes, so let's take it on. Um, my nephew is on SSI, and he gets uh, the monthly maximum federal benefit rate of $733 a month. Does he qualify for the earned income tax credit? He hasn't done taxes in three or four years. Um, and so does he qualify? And if he does qualify, will the refund he gets impact his eligibility. Uh, this is Richard. Uh, he, th there would have to be some sort of earned income to qualify for the earned income tax credit. Um, so if all he's getting is Social Security or SSI, uh, he more than likely would not qualify for the earned income tax credit. 
Um, and I, to answer the second part of the question, I believe that Jamie covered that that refunds mm-hmm. are not um, counted as far as for assets for at least a year. That's right. And just to piggyback on that, you know, now we're really fortunate that there are some really wonderful asset building tools out there. So if you do have your refund more for more, you're coming up on a year, um, there's going to be um, launching in 2016 some new opportunities through what's called an ABLE account. And you can watch a YouTube video that uh, we at NDI put out on these accounts. They'll launch this year. And for anybody who incurred their disability prior to age 26, you'll be able to set aside up to $14,000 a year in those accounts to improve the quality of your life. And the money you have in that account, again, will not count against any federally funded public benefit. The full amount you're going to be able to save towards is going to vary by state. The only, uh, it's going to be over $100,000, but for folks on SSI, $100,000 will be the maximum amount allowed in those accounts. So some wonderful opportunities coming forward. So keep tuning in to um, these webinars and to our publications through NDI so we can keep providing you with this, this information on improving your financial future. So we don't have any more questions, and we're just a few minutes before our, our final time. So I just want to offer a chance for Richard or Jamie to, to add anything else to the conversation. Richard, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, you know, one thing I did want to say, I, I forgot to mention that if you do, if you do have, have a chance to file uh, tax returns for back years, I neglected to say that you also earn interest on that from the due date of the return. So that's a little added benefit. Uh, if you haven't filed your taxes, you'll get it with interest. It's, at the IRS, it's, people always say that it's not fair, um, or, or people that come into the IRS say it's not fair that they have to pay interest, but it works the other way too. If money is due you, um, you receive interest on that as well. So that's just a little added bonus. Right. I Great. would I would I would encourage people if you're just kind of interested, perk your ear a little bit about self filing, but you feel a little bit like I don't think I could do that. I I've watched, I've been able to be around um people self filing on my free taxes for the first time with a tax coach kind of on hand and it's it's amazing how you know empowering it feels to do this on your own and so and i think it really can start people thinking about wow what else can i do <laughs> what else can i um do on my own um maybe i can do a past plan maybe i can think about um an individual development account maybe i can think about savings and start to take uh those steps in those in that direction so i would encourage you to kind of take a look and um like Elizabeth said, um, give it a try. Excellent. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Richard. It's wonderful to have had all of you on. Thank you also to Katie for her participation. And thank you to Nakia for being our tech guru today and helping us with all of our technology needs. Um, again, if there's anything we can offer you, please reach out to us. If you've never joined our listserv, you can find us at realeconomicimpact.org. Um, please join our listserv there. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Flickr, and Twitter. Tumblr, uh, reach out to us. We'd be very happy to hear from you and um, see what we can do to support you as you move forward in filing your taxes, setting financial goals, better understanding your public benefits, and just building a financial future for yourself and, or for those that you serve. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you again to our speakers. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great day, everyone.